Hello boys and girls and welcome to another series on my channel. I'm going to turn this down a little bit more because I think it's a little loud. Let's just take it down to there. Alright, we are playing Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. The Case of the Mummy's Curse. Uh, ever since I was a kid, I've been a fan of Sherlock Holmes. And when I found these games on Steam, there's actually three of them. I don't know if we'll get all through all three of them, but we'll see. I thought, hey, we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. So, let's start off with Holmes' introduction. London is not a beautiful city. Under the soot that covers its buildings is a teeming mass of four million souls trying to survive, mostly off of each other. You see it in the paper every day. Thankfully, we have the London Times to keep us informed of all these troubling activities with an unbiased eye and razor-sharp accuracy. We find this publication to be of invaluable assistance in our investigations, and I'm sure you will as well. Among the forces of evil which run rampant in this city, there are also, thankfully, two groups of individuals who will aid us in our cause. As we do, they attempt to right wrongs and restore harmony and civility to the streets of London. The first of these groups is a ragtag association of young ruffians. I call them the Baker Street Irregulars. Don't let them fool you. They may be scruffy and ill-bred, but they are on the right side of the law. They can go everywhere, see everything, and overhear everyone. They are my eyes and ears in the streets of London, unquestionably a tremendous asset in our work. They will help us in our investigations if they can. The other group is a far more civilized collection of gentlemen and institutions. I call them the Baker Street Regulars. They, too, will be extremely useful in our work. Such imagination. At the start of any investigation, do keep in mind that it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Unwittingly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. Ah, the famous the Holmesisms. To whom I will now introduce you will help us to collect the facts. May we use them wisely. Come, the game's afoot. Well, there we go. We have met Mr. Holmes. Shall we see about the regulars? Shall we? I suppose we shall. Oh wow. Uh, okay. So yeah, Ellis. O'Brien, Pike, Somerset House, Hogg, Shinwell, Inspector Lestrade, the London Library, Murray, Meek, and Hall. Edward Hall is a young barrister whom you will find on most days at the Old Bailey. He's a cut above the other unimaginative members of his profession. Holmes, don't you think you should explain to them the difference between a barrister and a solicitor? Yes, of course, Watson. A solicitor handles the routine legal business of our society. If you do not have to go before a court, you will have no need for a barrister. If you must go before a court, then your solicitor would engage the services of a barrister. Aha, uh -huh. so now we know that. I don't think we're going to read all this. I guess uh, we might need to a little later. But uh, for now, let's just go back. What is our sleuthing tools? I think you'll find these tools to be positively invaluable as you endeavor to help Holmes solve these cases. I'm sure we will. The newspaper should be your first stop when starting a case. Simply choose one of the papers and look for relevant names and locations in the articles. You can scroll each column up and down. We have the directory, which contains names and places to help you in your sleuthing. When you hear or read about a curious name, select the appropriate tab to look it up. Then use directory tools to investigate further. Once you select a name or a location, select one of the three icons below. You can send Holmes and Watson to the destination, send the Baker Street Irregulars instead, or search Holmes files for additional information. You can use your notebook in two ways. Select the Clue History tab to review information on what you have seen and done. Select the Q hit clue, sorry, clue Hints tab to request a hint from Dr. Watson himself. Dr. Watson actually gives us a hint. 
send the detectives to sending the detectives to a location will play a video scene. Some scenes are pertinent to the case, while others may be dead ends or red herrings. Touch the video for playback controls. Enable or disable subtitles in the settings menu. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's sort of an interactive play type game thing. If you believe you have gained enough information to solve the mystery, select the gavel icon to bring your case before a judge. He will ask you specific questions to determine if you are indeed a master sleuth. I want to be a master sleuth! Yay! Okay, clue points. 10 points. Send the detectives to a relevant location. 20 points. Send the detectives to a dead end red herring. So you have more points for sending the the detectives away. Anyway, send the irregulars to a relative location. Send the irregulars to a dead end red herring. Request a hint from Dr. Watson. Answer the judge's answers correctly. Oh, maybe these are minus, minus. Oh yes, here we go. Certain actions in the game will cost you clue points. Your goal is to solve the mystery in as few points as possible. Note that you will not incur additional points by sending the detectives or the regulars to a duplicate name in the directory. Aha! Okay, so we're all done. Let's now just jump right in and we'll play the game. There's supposedly settings around here. I don't see where they are. So we will just play the game. Oh, here we go. Settings. Aha, let's... Ah, we'll leave that down. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Eh, we will take subtitles. We'll not go back to full screen because I don't know how that'll screw up my resolution on this first video. Maybe on the second video we'll, uh, we'll check that. I really got to start going into these a little bit more educated. <laughs> All right, uh, begin a new game. Within a lantern-lit sitting room at 221B Baker Street, Sherlock Holmes slowly takes a pull from his pipe, while Dr. Watson, reclining a bit of... Whoa, reclining after a bit of tea, peruses a discarded copy of the London Times. What rubbish! What bald affairs! You must have read something terribly disturbing, Watson, for you to be so overwrought this early in the morning. Indeed, Holmes. It's irresponsible of the Times to play upon people's superstitions. Ah! You must be referring to the affair of the mummy's curse. Set the entire city in an uproar. Three men dead, and they expect us to believe that a 4,000-year-old mummy was the murderer. I'm a mummy? I'm surprised some interest in this case, Holmes. To the contrary, my dear Watson. I have made some inquiries. Because, I dare say, I do believe this murderer is a much younger chap. Ha 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 ha. Such wit. Such wit. All right. Shall we read the newspaper? Oh, let's see. Let's go back 18. Oh, geez. We go back quite a ways. Uh, let's see. Welcome home. We're going to not give you a appointment. Anyone... Uh, oh, let's see. A flitchet. Flitchet. Live ostriches. Strange event. A sudden gale off the Isle of Man. A murder. Here we go. A murder was committed in Bloomberry last night. Shortly after 10 p.m., Constable Lane, summoned by cries for help, entered the home of 42 Tottenham Court Road of Mr. Oswald Mason, chief accountant of the Bank of England, and found the body in his study where he had apparently been murdered by the blow to the head. Mr. Mason's body was discovered by his wife upon her return to the home around 10 p.m. The police report only that the intruder apparently entered by the upstairs window and, judging by the disarray of the study, a struggle occurred in which Mr. Mason met his death. As of this time, the crime has not been brought home to any person, but the best detectives in Scotland Yard <laughs> are now involved in the investigation and search for the per perpetrator of this bloody crime. Mr. Mason is survived by his wife, Rose, and a brother, Cecil. Oh, well, interesting. Let's see what the most recent says. To the editor of the Times, Sir, with regard to the recent mummy murders, I'd like to suggest that we abandon our attempts to disturb the ancients, in their graves or otherwise. This applies not only to such excavations as have come, become so common in Egypt, Morocco, and the other foreign lands, but also to such projects in our own British Isles. 
If the hypothesis of such men as James Ferguson, who believes that Stonehenge is the ancient that word, monument of the Saxon Druids, are true, we should leave these burial grounds undisturbed. Surely, if these murders are the work of some present-day mortal human, the police will discover his identity and bring him to justice. I do sincerely believe, however, that we should not meddle in the magic and sorcery of which we know not, for we have not with the means to control the forces thus unleashed. Well, let's see, we got some marriages. Oh, look at that. And Reginald Reagan. Ha oh, ha. To G Thomas Joyce. Okay, you remember to John Faith. Oh, look at that. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, Reverend Roger. Okay, never mind. Elder daughter. Okay, yeah, good. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, okay, so I don't see much. So let's just, let's just jump right in here. Let's do some investigation. Oh, no, no more newspapers. Newspapers are boring. Uh, let's go to the directory. Let's see. Um, hmm. Who did we see in here? Oh, uh, how about how about Cecil? Cecil. Well, let's go find Cecil. What was Cecil's last name? Uh, let's see. I can't remember what his last name was now. Hmm. I don't see a Cecil. Do you see a Cecil? A Cyril. Hmm, no Cecil's. Well, let's go see who The Do you know Jesus Club? Let's search Holmes's files. Dio Jeans Club, founded by my illustrious brother Mycroft. Sorry to say, but it seems to have been established for the convenience of some of the most unsociable and unclubable men in town. Well, that's interesting. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Baskerville. There is a name. Sir Charles Baskerville, the current patriarch of the Baskerville family. He restored their lost fortune and is currently living at Beckersville Hall, located on Dartmoor, not far from the hamlet of, hamlet of Grimpen. All right, well, that's not really helping as much here, boys and girls. Let's go see the notebook. Dr. Worson learns from the Times that the mummy is supposedly responsible for three men's death. He does not reveal the names, but they are certainly listed in the articles. Yes, they were. I don't want a hint. Leave the hints out. Okay, so let's go get... We must get a name. I forgot to... Da, 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 da. Yes, uh, Fever. Edmund Norton Wright. Let's see if that works. Edmund Norman Wright. Is he in our directory? Uh, he'd be W, right? Uh, nope, he is not in. He's not in the note. Okay, so let's go back to the older newspaper. Let's see, deaths. Ah. Uh, American papers, please copy. I wonder if that was normal. <laughs> at Marylebone, uh, Asag Payar, 32, of French nationality, was charged with performing with a bear by the name of Clyde in the public highway, causing a crowd to assemble. Ooh, such evilness. Such evil. Evilness. Uh, okay, Ebenezer Turnbull. He, he died there. So, Ebenezer to Turnbull and Elizabeth Diana. Let's see. No, I said no. I said no. There, Turnbull and Ebenezer. Search his own files. The third son of the Earl of Downey. At the age of six, he discovered a Roman ruin and on the family's country estate. He has led a number of archaeological excursions, notably several to the Luxor Karnak area, where he's made some significant archaeological discoveries. Let's send an irregular. Finally, Tipper says, after Dr. Watson asks the irregular to visit a home of the murdered gentleman. With a shilling in hand, the lad runs out and disappears into the fog. The lady was nice enough. She looked about like someone was going to jump out of the bushes she died. Hmm. Hmm. 
Let's see. Yes, we already know that. Okay, so... What was her name, though? Send the detectives. Oh, we go ourselves. Dr. Turnbull. It was a strange one, he was. Hardly ever at home. Always traipsing about a lord knows where. May I take a look at these things? Oh, suit yourself. All he had is a big pile of books about Egyptian mummies and a few maps. He was a son of an earl, he was. So you hardly tell son of an earl? Poor fellow. Do you really think this mummy thing what done him in? Keep your sis. Ooh, creepy, creepy. Okay, so, boys and girls, let us, let us determine what to Hmm. We're not doing so well. Okay, so, let's go to the judge. Holmes and Watson leave 221 Baker Street. It's 221B, to be precise. Baker Street and hurry to the Queen's Court to present their case before the magistrate. We have no idea what's going to go on, but let's just yeah, try this. Gentlemen. You haven't done a thorough enough job of investigating yet. Do continue your sleuthing. Well, darn. All right, boys and girls. We will continue this next episode. Um, it's looking pretty interesting. It's kind of a neat little game. Um, we'll see how we get on. Alrighty, boys and girls, here from Victoria and London, we're going to leave the case of the mummy's curse, as of yet, unsolved.